Hello guys, welcome back to another book recommendation and today we're going to take a look at How Adam Smith Can Change Your Life, An Unexpected Guide to Human Nature and Happiness by Russ Roberts. And with a cheesy title like that, <laughs> I probably never would have read it if it had not been recommended to me. But I'm happy I did read it, it's an excellent book and now I'll recommend it to you. Adam Smith is best known as the sort of founding father for economics. He wrote the book The Wealth of Nations and came up with the self-interest economic theory of capitalism. But he also wrote another book and that's called The Theory of Moral Sentiments and that book is not that well known. So the author of this book, Russ Roberts, read The Theory of Moral Sentiments and he realized that it's a very underappreciated book that Adam Smith wrote and there's a lot of excellent thoughts and ideas in it. And surprisingly, it's a book that today would be on the self-help shelf in a bookstore. <laughs> Not the thing that you would normally expect from Adam Smith, the founder of capitalism. So Ross Roberts distilled all of Adam Smith's thoughts in uh, The Moral Sentiments of Man into his own book and brought it to a modern audience in an easy to read, easy to understand and engaging way. So let's jump right into the core concept of the book and that can be encapsulated in this line. Man naturally desires not only to be loved, but to be loving. And that's how Adam Smith thinks that you need to live your life if you want to be happy. So let's take a look at the first part of that sentence, that everyone wants to be loved. Smith doesn't mean loved the way we mean it today as connected to romance and family. He means it in a fuller sense. He means that we want people to like us, respect us and care about us. We want us. We want to be appreciated, desired, praised and cherished. We want people to pay attention to us and take us seriously. We want them to want our presence, to enjoy our company. So to be loved is a sort of in a wide sense that you need the respect and acknowledgement and to be noticed by your peers as well. And the second part of the happiness equation that Smith presents is that you need to be loving and that really means that you need to be worthy of the love, praise, acknowledgement and all of the other good stuff that you receive. If you are not, you will always know that you are not worthy of it and you will not be happy. So to take an example of that, you can look at Bernie Madoff on the surface. He was successful, wealthy, loved, respected, whatever you want to call it in general society and probably also by his family. But he always knew that he was a fraud, so he was not really worthy of all that he received and he was well aware of that. And he did say he was relieved when he was arrested. He was caught in his own private hill. Another example could be Lance Armstrong, who was basically lying about not being on drugs. And everyone else was lying for him as well. His uh, family and friends and other people believed in him, but he knew all of but of course he knew all of the time that he was on drugs. So he wasn't really worthy of what he received. At least not if you had to play by the actual rules and what you presented to society. So according to Smith, Lance wasn't really that happy <laughs> when he was winning. Because he also knew he was cheating. So you not only need to be loved and receive all of this praise, success, attention and all of that good stuff. But you also need to be worthy of it. So how do we go about getting what we need in the first part of that sentence to be loved and there are two roads and the first one is uh, the money success fame road to it obviously if you're a big movie star everybody uh, wants to be around you wants to hang out with you and give you stuff and you make ton of money you will definitely be noticed and you'll probably also be loved and even respected so that's one way of going about it but you still need to uh, live up to the second part of it that you need to be worthy of the praise and love and all of that stuff so you can't <laughs> become an ass and not be worthy of it. And the second road is to just be a virtuous man and do what's right. So that'll make you worthy of love, of respect from your peers and your colleagues and everyone around you. And if you have a good attitude to life and are positive, people will want to be around you. So that's much less glitzy and glamorous and not very and not necessarily very powerful. But it's a safe way to be loved, to just be a nice person, be virtuous. And if you look at it, the first road with the money, success, fame, that is somewhat out of your control. 
because some of it's random and, and you have to be pretty lucky. You can be hardworking and smart and never attain that kind of success if you don't have any luck. But being virtuous is always 100% in your control. You can always be nice to people. You can always not yell at your wife, not beat your children, not drink, not embezzle at the company. So how do we know how to be virtuous? And Smith has a tool for that, and, that's, and he calls it the impartial spectator. So if you're about to do something, you can imagine that someone that you don't know who is impartial, a stranger, is looking at you and seeing exactly what you're doing. So if you're about to steal an apple, you might imagine what a stranger who was watching you would think of that. Or if you're about to yell at your wife and be really angry, you might imagine what an impartial spectator would think of that. Or if you're about to give advice, you know, you can, you can do it with all situations. So the impartial spectator is really representing the, what is socially acceptable, moral and ethics of the society and the peer group that you live in. So it's sort of a benchmark for that. But how do society arrive at these morals and what's right and what's wrong? And according to Smith, it's the sum total of all of the actions within the society. So in that way, it becomes sort of a democratic vote, really. You vote with your actions. So if you're constantly cheating on your wife, you're probably helping to make that more socially acceptable. Or if you're getting drunk, you're helping making that socially acceptable. Not that we are judging any of these things here. We're just trying to, uh, to show that uh, whatever action you do every day uh, impacts the sum total of all of the actions in the society, which in the end decides the moral and ethics of that society and, what's socially, and what is socially acceptable. And you can just look at what's socially acceptable today and what was 100 years ago or 50 years ago or even 20 years ago. And you'll see that it moves. It's in constant flow and you're part of it. What you do every day helps decide. So according to Smith, to lead a happy life, you need to be loved, have the respect of your peers, to be acknowledged, to be noticed, have some measure of success. And you need to be worthy of what you receive. You need to be worthy of the love, of the praise, of the success, of the being noticed, of the respect and the acknowledgement of your peers. You can't cheat to get there or you'll know. You'll always know what you do. There's no getting around that. All right, guys, that's sort of a short introduction to uh, the core concepts of the book. But of course, there's much more in it. So if this interests you, you should pick up the book and read it. And it'll probably inspire you to go back and read Smith's original book, which is still in print. I'll put a link in the description to both books. But I recommend that you start with Ross Roberts' excellent uh, distillation of Smith's work because then it'll be much easier to read <laughs> Smith's works afterwards because that's really old English and perhaps not that easy to understand if you just go at it without any preparation. Let me know what you think of this video or the book if you read it or anything else you like in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you all next time.